this is Mr. T uh, showing you how to graph absolute value functions using translations and understanding how graphs move instead of having to make a table of values. The skills we learn here on translating absolute value functions will work the same later in the year if this is a x squared function or a square root function, etc. We're going to look at a series of single translations to start with and then at the end we'll put together a problem that has multiple different translations applied to it. The first translation I'm doing is we are adding a number to the end of the function, so the number we're adding is outside the absolute value. When we add a number to a function like this, it's going to cause the graph to shift up, in this case by three units. If I subtracted the number, if I subtracted three, we would move down. So the base function would change in this case by moving up to uh, three, and the slopes of the sides would still be the same as we had in the base function. So that would be the graph here of f of absolute value of x plus 3. I've restored the graph back to our base function now and I've put up a second uh, translation. This time we are subtracting a number inside the absolute value. If you remember in the last lesson the way we found the vertex was to set this expression equal to 0 so we know our new vertex is going to be at plus 2 which is a shift to the right. When we add or subtract numbers inside the parentheses, the shifts are kind of opposite of what you would expect. Subtracting a number shifts it to the right, adding a number shifts it to the left, so this translation would be graphed as moving it to the right two units. The slope of the sides would be the same as in the base function. Again, I've restored it back to our base function and put the next translation in. Our next translation we're multiplying the function by a negative. Multiplying a function by a negative flips it around the x-axis. So in this case, our graph is going to have the same vertex, but now it's going to be uh, opening down. Okay, our last kind of translation is multiplying the function which I've restored back to its base function by either a constant which could be bigger than one or a constant that could be smaller than one, a fraction. The effect of these for absolute value functions are going to be to affect the slope of the sides. For all kinds of translations if you multiply by a number bigger than one it makes the uh, base makes the resulting graph narrower than the base function and we multiply by fractions it makes it wider. We'll see that when we go through that. So if we graph this uh, red function here 2 times x our vertex is still at the same but now the slope of our side going to the right is 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. We can use the uh, reverse slope up to left one, up to left one to find the uh, left side of the graph. So I'm drawing here in red f of 2 absolute value of x. If I get my green pen here, this one, the slope is going to be uh, 1 half. So we would go up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2. Going to the left, up 1, left 2, up 1, left 2. And our resulting graph in green would be this. So again, numbers uh, bigger than 1 make the graph skinnier, and numbers that are fractions make it wider. Okay, let's do our last example. We have three translations. This is going to shift it down 4, this is shifting at left 3, and this is making the slope steeper. So our vertex is going to go left 3 and down 4. And our slope is going to be 2 on each side. And now we have the graph that resulted from the translation. So it's shifted left and down and narrower than the original function. I hope this helped you. Hello, this is Mr. T talking to you about graphing absolute value functions. I know this is an absolute value function because I have an expression that involves x that is between the absolute value symbols. I also know for this absolute value uh, function 
that the expression between the absolute value is a linear function. When that happens, I know that my shape for my uh, gra final graph will be a V shape. All, all linear absolute values have a shape of V. So we have an interesting point that we want to find called the vertex. Since we know the sides are lines, we will end up needing to find two other points. So in total we need to find three points. Another background fact is that the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex, can be found where the expression that's between the absolute value symbols equals zero. So if I want to go about finding the vertex of this problem, to get the x-coordinate, I have to set x plus 2, which is inside the absolute value, equal to 0. If I solve that, I get x equals negative 2. Now, the vertex is a coordinate pair, a point, so we need to find the y-value. As in any function, to find the y-value, we can substitute in the x. So I'm going to put my negative 2 in for my x and calculate my equation. We have to do the abs what's inside the absolute value first, so we get negative 2 times the absolute value of 0. The absolute value is 0, so I have negative 2 times 0 plus 3. And negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. So my vertex is at negative 2 comma 3. I'm going to use graphing by making a table of values for organizing my points. So I've already found the point negative 2, 3. As we talked about up here, I want one point to the right of the vertex and one to the left. So something that would be to the right of this uh, negative 2 would be 0, and something to the left might be, for example, negative 4. I have to calculate my y again by putting into my function. So I end up with negative 2 times the absolute value of 2 plus 3. Absolute value of 2 is plus 2. Plus 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Plus 3, which gives me negative 1. And if I do the same thing for putting 4, negative 4 in for the x, this time I get negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 plus 3, which is negative 2 times positive 2 plus 3 which is also negative 1. So if we plot our points we have the vertex at negative 2, 3. Put a little V here to let me know it's the vertex. I have a point at 0, negative 1 and I have my point here at negative 4, negative 1 and we can draw our V-shape. Now just before we end, I just want to talk about how we can understand what the shape of the graph should look like just by looking at the function. This is called graphing by using translations. When we have an add or subtract to an x in a parentheses, that shifts the graph to the right or the left. We can see in this case it shifted us two to the left from the origin. When we add a constant to a function, that shifts it up or down. If I add a positive constant, we shift up 3. Negative values would make it move down. Finally, this negative, multiplying the absolute value by a negative, caused the V to be flipped upside down. So I hope this tutorial helps you, and good luck with your problems.